G'day and welcome back to Disc Golf Down Under. It's Matt here and this is part three of our beginner's guide to disc golf. If you missed the previous video, part two, check it out in the card up above where we looked at driving and throwing the backhand. So that, those techniques will help you get off the tee and down the fairway. And when you're within about 10 to 20 meters of the basket, you need to switch to something very, very important, which is putting. So let's get into it. So there's a famous saying in traditional golf, drive for show and putt for dough. And it's very similar in disc golf. You will be using your putter probably more often than any other disc in your bag. So it is good to learn how to throw the putter. And if you can putt well, you're halfway there. It's also quite easy to practice your putting. You can set up a target in your backyard. It's easy enough to just cut out a piece of cardboard, 50 by 50 centimeters square, hang it up on the clothesline, uh, have some throws at it, and hit the target. Uh, if you want, you can even take it inside. Set up a sheet behind the uh, cardboard just in case you miss. So there's no excuses for not practicing your putting. Whereas driving, you do have to get out on the course. Putting you can do in your backyard, you can do inside your house. And if you can get out to the course, throw on the baskets, even better. So in part one of my beginner's guide on discs and disc selection, I talked a lot about flight rating. So if you want to check that out, this is very important more for the fairway drivers and the mid ranges. But for putters, flight ratings aren't as important. It's more about the feel of the disc and what feels comfortable to you. So there's a lot of different types of putters, and I guess there's two main styles of putter. And when we look at them, there's what we call the beadless putter. So this is a beadless putter. It doesn't have anything on the bottom. And this is a beaded putter. And you can see here there's a little rim. So if we compare the two, you can see the beaded versus the beadless. And there's a, there's a distinct little rim on the bottom of the beaded putter. These, this comes down to feel. So the beaded putters are designed to have a bit more durability and last a bit longer, keep their flight ratings. But if they're used for putting, it really comes down to comfort. So what do you feel comfortable with? Do you like the bead underneath or do you prefer the beadless feel? So that's something that you might have to try out. If you can, go down to your disc golf club, find some different members and check out their putters. See if you can find the two types and what feels comfortable in your hand. The other differences that you'll find with putters is the firmness or softness. Um, you can get very soft and flippy, floppy discs like this one. This is uh, a very soft uh, judge from Dynamic Discs and you can feel you can fold it up like a taco. And this is a, uh, a sort of a medium stiffness Envy from Axiom. And then we can also get uh, also in the very firm plastics as well. So this is a firm Envy and it's very stiff. It's like a board. So that one's got a nice knock to it. That one's a bit of a thud. So some people have the theory that the softer ones hit the change and chains and will just drop into the basket. Uh, but really, again, it comes down to feel. What feels good out of your hand? So again, if you can, try them out at the uh, local disc golf course. We also talked about different types of plastics in part one. And I mentioned for putters that we tend to stick to the baseline plastics. So here's an example. This is a Gateway Wizard in their baseline plastic. And you can see it has a matte type finish it's almost, it feels chalky in the hand between like a rubber and a chalk. Whereas the premium plastics like this one here uh, are more slick and shiny and slippery, especially if they get wet. So that is why people tend to stick to the baseline plastics. They have a better feel, more grip. You feel more confident when you're putting with a baseline plastic. When we're driving, we tend to keep our body straight uh, side on to where we are aiming. So if the basket's here in front of me, we have our body aligned with our shoulders pointing towards the target. With putting though, when we get down to within 10 to 20 meters of the basket, we want to get our body more square on. It helps us to aim and to line ourselves up with the basket. So that's the first thing we want to look at. And what we want to do is project the disc in a straight line. Like we did before with our drives, we came through in a straight line, throwing the disc down the runway. With putting, we want to do the same thing. So we want to get the body, the disc in close to the body, center of our body, and we want to project out in a straight line. We don't want to spin the body. We don't want to throw off to the side. We don't want to do the traditional Frisbee throw, etc. We want to get in center of the body and a straight line out towards the target. So that's the first thing we want to do. 
Also, it's not just about the hands and the arms. It's, it's a full body thing, again, just like driving. We're gonna get our feet involved, our legs, our upper body, everything is working in the putt. And you'll find that if you get your entire body working, it's better than just a single flick with the wrist. Okay, it's also a good point to talk now about marking your disc. So when we throw our disc off the tee and it lands down on the fairway, if you want to use the same disc, we can, if we want, mark it and pick up that disc and throw it. Or we can leave it as it is. If we leave it as it is, we need to put our plant foot somewhere within a sheet of paper. If you think of A4 sheet of paper laying length on, your foot must land and touch that sheet of paper behind the back of the disc. If you want to get a little bit closer to the target, which is very useful during putting, another 20, 30 centimeters might be useful, give you some more confidence. We use what's called a marker disc. So it's a smaller version of a disc golf disc. And if our basket is this direction here, we put it at the front of the disc, moving towards the basket. If we then want to throw that disc that we threw previously, we can step up behind our marker and throw that or we can leave that disc on the ground or put it back in our bag and throw a different disc. So with putting, think about marking your disc. The other important rule in disc golf that's important is when you're within 10 meters of the basket or 33 feet for our Imperial friends, uh, we call that inside the circle. And there's a specific rule that doesn't allow you to come in front of your disc until the disc or come in front of your marker disc before your disc comes to a stop, either in the basket or on the ground. So you're not allowed to jump over your marker. You're not allowed to jump putt, step putt, things like that. So you must remain with your foot behind the disc at all times until your disc comes to rest. So just think of that one as well. If you're outside the circle, outside the 10 meter circle, you can jump and we'll talk a bit about that later in the video. Okay, next up we're going to look at grip and how to hold the disc for putting. So in the previous video, in part two, we looked at the power grip for driving. So where you get your fingers all stacked up under the rim there and thumb on top. For putting, we use what's called a fan grip. So this, you start usually with your index finger and you'll put it on the rim of the disc and feel what's comfortable for you. Some people, I like to put it sort of straight on. Some people might like to have it just under, just under the rim, particularly if there's a bead. Some people like to rest under the bead or just slightly on top. So get that index finger where it feels comfortable. And then the bottom fingers will sit under the disc like that. So they'll fan out. Some people like to spread them out. Some people like to have them like that. And then thumb on top. And when you're driving, it's more out towards the rim, but for putting, you're gonna pull it in a little bit more. So that is our grip. And a good drill to find out what is the best fan grip is to sort of throw the disc in your hand like that and see where your, your fingers end up because that's what feels comfortable for you. So that is my fan grip, but it all comes down to comfort. So the point of the fan grip is to give you more control. So those three fingers underneath will help to uh, direct and keep the disc online. The next thing we're going to look at is our feet and setting up our feet. So in this example here, our target is directly in front of us. And I'm side on here. And so we need, to, we, we need to keep our feet behind the marker disc or the disc that we've thrown. And there's two different setups. And you need to try them out and see what feels comfortable for you. So the, the stance is probably seen the most these days. It's what's called the stagger stance. So you'll have, if you're right-handed, you'll have your right foot behind the disc. It might be pointing directly at the target or it might be slightly tilted away. And then your back foot will be behind maybe slightly out at a bit of an angle. And what you want to do is you've got your upper body, it's sort of at a, almost a 45 degree angle facing away from the basket. So that is our stagger stance. And again, it's about weight transfer. So just practice rocking backwards and forwards. So coming onto the, all the weight onto the back, all the weight back onto the front, onto the back, onto the front. And so you'll use that weight transfer to help propel the disc. The other type of stance that we see uh, less so these days is the straddle stance. Uh, it does become very useful if there's something in front of you. So if there's a tree right in front of me, if I need to get around it, I can use the straddle stance to go and look either side. So 
So with straddle stance, again, we must have at least one foot behind the disc. It can be either your left or your right. And then the other foot, you must draw a line that's no closer to the, to the basket. And I can have my feet behind that line. So I can stretch it out and I can go out to whatever feels comfortable. Some putters actually have quite a wide straddle stance. Some have a narrow. And as I said, you can have your right foot on the disc or you can have your left foot. So it gives you a bit of a different line at the target. So if I've got a tree here, I can use my straddle stance to get away from that tree. And I can, even if I want, move my weight out onto, push it out onto right or left leg to get even more distance out if I want. And with this type of throw, we're looking at more of a bounce up. So you get up on the balls of your feet, bend your knees a bit, bend down, and you're gonna come up on the balls of your feet and propel upwards and perhaps a little bit forward. So those are the two styles of stance that you see. Um, some people will have variations of that. You may mix the straddle and the stagger. Uh, you may switch between them, but uh, most of the good golfers in the world at the moment have got the stagger stance. So KJ does a pretty good job with the straddle too. Okay, the next two styles that we'll look at are the throwing styles. So we've got what we term today the push putt and the spin putt. So the push putt is more of a lob or a scoop, and the spin putt is more of a stab or a, more of a throw, I guess. So we'll demonstrate each of these. The push putt is very good at short range and is much more accurate. So if you're in, within that five meter distance, the push putt can be very, very useful. So we set up and it, it works best probably, you can use it either with the straddle or the stagger. I'm gonna do it with the straddle just for demonstration purposes. And the, the push putt does work quite well with the straddle. So we get our grip, get it set up, get our finger in more towards the center of the disc. And what we wanna do is we line up with the target. And as I said, it's going to follow a straight line in towards the basket. And we wanna hold the nose up at around about 45 degrees. So you'll see the disc is going to throw, you're gonna throw it like a pendulum. So we bend down, remember get onto the weight on your knees, we get down and we're going to throw it up and scoop it up like that. So just to demonstrate that again, down. So you will notice with the push putt that the disc will tend to wobble a little bit because you're not putting much spin on the disc. The only spin, and, and what you'll see as well, is as I'm throwing, my hand is not spinning on the disc at all. The only spin that is imparted is as it comes out of my hand and there's like a little bit of rotation off the thumb. So you want to keep your hand straight, your finger at the target, and we're pulling up like that. We'll remember nose up, and that's how it comes out. And when you let go, we want our hand to be facing the basket. So let me demonstrate that again, straight on. And you can see my hand finishes up pointing directly at the basket. You don't want it going off to the left or the right because it's about keeping that disc on line with the basket. And so the other style is the spin putt. And the spin putt is more useful at longer distances. So if you're outside the circle, uh, it gives you a bit more power. The disc is spun with the fingers, with the hand, and it has a bit more glide. So it has a bit more distance. Therefore, and it's also good in the wind as well. It's the, the push putt can be easily deflected by the wind, whereas the spin putt keeps its uh, line a little bit better. So we're going to demonstrate this one with the stagger stance. So you'll see the stagger stance used a lot with the spin putt. So we set up with our feet, same sort of fan grip as before. What we'll find, you tend to pull the disc in a little bit more. So you're gonna spin this a little bit more. So rather than just bringing your hand up, you might bring the hand, tuck it in a little bit more. And so what we do is we come down, we bring it into our belly button, or a bit lower. And what we wanna do is push out towards the basket. And you can see, as my hand comes out, it finishes up pointing towards the basket. So just showing that direct onto the camera here. If I set up my stance, bring it into my lower body, and then I'm going to flick straight out towards the target. And you'll see there's a bit of a a flick of the wrist as I, as I come out. And it's quite a fast movement as well. Whereas the, the push putt, the push putt is more of a, just a, a gentle lob. 
the spin, as I said, is more of a stab. For those shorter putts, the weight transfer is not going to be very important. It's more of a just a nice flow through with the arm. But when you get a bit further away, if you get out to about seven, eight meters, maybe even outside the circle, we need to bring our body more into it. So it's a full body throw. So as we mentioned before with the stagger, what you want to do is sort of rock forwards and backwards. So you want to get back and then move forward. And what I like to do is as I come forward onto my toes, I like to press up. So just to demonstrate that, I come back and I almost squat down a little bit as well. I pull the bum down into the ground. So come down and up and press up with the toes. So you're coming up nice and high and hold that head up and look at the target. So to demonstrate again, straight up and at the target. You can also do the same with the straddle. So we can set up for our straddle stance. We want to get down nice and low, it's almost like a squat, get the back backside out, get down, almost weight on the heels and then we're going to come forward and spring up. So if you are having problems with distance, look at your entire body. Look at your legs, look at your, your upper body as well. We want to push forward nice and strong. Okay, the next thing I want to touch on is the head. Something often forgotten is to what do you want to do with your head? So what we're going to do is we want to look at our target. And what I like to do is pick out a particular chain link. So I look about halfway up in the, in the portal, in the window, pick a chain, usually slightly to the right hand of the basket. And I'll focus on that. And the other thing you want to do is you want to keep your head still throughout the entire movement. So as, as I might go down and I might come up, I'm keeping my eyes focused on the target, the head still. And you want to do that from all the way through, from when you're setting up, coming up, letting go, watch it all the way in. A good drill, stick a disc on your head and practice with the disc on the head to keep it nice and still. And you should be able to throw the disc into the basket without the other disc coming off your head. The next question that some people ask is how hard do I need to throw it at the basket? Should I just be lobbing it in so it's just got enough strength to reach into the, into the bucket? Or do I need to throw it a bit harder? And if you watch the pros, they really slam it into the, into the chains. And if they miss, they're going to go a long way past. Confidence and practice has a lot to do with that. But as a beginner, how hard do we throw it? Well, the good thing to do is to look at how far, or how, how good are you as a putter? How, you know, where can I get 90% of my putts in from? Is it three meters, five meters, seven meters? And what you want to do is go out to the opposite side of the basket and drop a disc on the ground at that distance. So if you think you can get 90, 95% of your putts from five meters, go out, drop a disc on the opposite side, then come back. And what you want to do is throw the disc and try and aim to get this disc on top of the, the one that's out past the basket. And we're not, just not going to try and put this one in the basket. We're going to try and throw it past the chains. And I want it to land and end up where my other disc is. That will give you a good feel for how hard you should be throwing the disc. Okay, the other thing I want to demonstrate is what you can do to get a little bit more power on your throws when you're outside the circle. So if you're outside the 10 meters, we can do what's called either a jump putt or a step putt. So it helps give you a bit more power into your shot. So what I'm going to do is just demonstrate a couple of different versions. And again, it comes down to what feels comfortable to you. So the first one is the step putt. So what we want to do is, we want, again, we want to plant our foot behind the disc. And what we do is, we, as we move forward, we'll take a step. And we'll throw the disc as we're taking that step. And that helps propel the disc. And you can do it with each, whichever foot feels comfortable for you. Some people like to step with the other foot. So they like to, if they drive with their right, they want to keep their right in with, with the disc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant the left foot and throw with the right leg stepping out. So that is the step putt. The other style 
of putting is called the jump putt. And again, the jump can be a jump off the stagger or the straddle. So you'll see the jump a lot with the straddle putt. So if I set up for the straddle putt, I get down nice and low and I jump like that. Doesn't really feel comfortable for me. I'm not a big fan of the jump putt. Or again, I can do it with the stagger stance. Like that. And I can take like a hop or a jump or a bounce. And again, it comes down to what feels comfortable for you. So try them out, practice them, and see whether you prefer the jump or the step. Or you may just prefer to keep your feet grounded and go with a nice long spin putt. So that's the basics of putting. And I hope this has been useful to show you all the different styles and methods. And just like throwing backhand and trying to get that distance, putting is about practice, practice, practice. It's about muscle memory. It's about getting the grip right, just you know, getting ready to just step up, getting the disc in, propelling it in a straight line. Shake hands with the basket. So that's what we say a lot, shake hands with the basket. You're keeping your arms straight, hands reaching out, hands shaking the basket. So we don't get to do a lot of that these days with COVID. So make sure you do it with your disc golf putts. And the great thing about putting is you don't need to go out to the course and throw at baskets. As I said before, you can set up a target in your backyard and throw, practice, practice, practice. And it doesn't need to be a basket. It can be a piece of cardboard. It can be a sheet. It can be whatever you like. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Uh, if you did, give it a like and please consider subscribing to the channel as well. That helps me out. Uh, if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And uh, if also, if you've got any other ideas for putting, if you've got any drills that you like to do, put them in the comments down below. There are some great apps out there as well that you can download to, um, to turn it into a game and make it a bit more fun. So that's it, guys. Good luck on the golf course and we'll see you in the next one.